Jill has introduced boobs first. Oddly, this is only the second worst Resident Evil game that takes place on a ship. That honor goes to Resident Evil Dead Aim. Incredible. Yeah, it's a boat, Jill. It's actually not that impressive. Take us around. Let's find a boarding point. Or maybe you should do what everyone at sea would do and first try to establish radio contact with the crew. 94 minutes since Chris and Jessica dropped off the radar. But the interpolation from their last known coordinates puts them right here on this ship. Unless this boat was unmoved by the wind and waves, there is no way this is Chris's last known location due to interpolated data. Also, later we find out Chris was hiking through a snowfield on a mission in Finland. So how the hell do they figure Chris got all the way from Finland to the Mediterranean in 94 minutes? Jill and Parker lifted this floor grade due to a blinking light they saw inside. Once they open it, the blinking light is gone, and I'm not even sure where it was coming from, since guns and severed arms do not normally come with LEDs. Where did you pull that scanner from? Need I remind you, you are wearing a wetsuit that doesn't leave much to the imagination. Sure. Reach your unprotected hand down into that mass of gore. You are only looking into a possible act of bioterrorism, after all. So, it's not Chris. <clears throat> How can you tell? It's not like Chris has identifying marks or rings on his right hand. Even the monsters in this game want to stare at Jill's ass. This room was empty a second ago, but that doesn't stop this thing from appearing behind Jill. Let's talk about the enemy design in this game. It's bad. This is not good. Thanks, Jill, for your brilliant tactical analysis. The Exposition News Network would like to remind you that it is still the most trusted source for overwrought backstory narration. It took a full 11 years to finish constructing the world's first Aquapolis, the floating city of Terra Grigia. A sustainable metropolis operating on a massive solar energy matrix. It took them only 11 years to not only build a floating city in the Mediterranean, but a giant orbital solar station to power it as well. All before 2004. The International Space Station wasn't even complete at that time. And this thing is about a thousand times bigger. In 2004, Veltro, a terrorist group opposing the city's development, launched a bioterrorist attack. Whom you've never heard of before. Because each new Resident Evil game these days has to have its own virus and villain organization that's different from the previous game rather than build on established lore. Veltro, a terrorist group opposing the city's development, launched a bioterrorist attack. Well, they had 11 years to attack this place if they were against it. Development would have started in 1994, but these terrorists waited until after it was complete. This launched one of the worst tragedies the world has ever seen. Except for Raccoon City, which was destroyed just a few years ago in this timeline. Would the world be so quick to forget the nuking of an American city infected by zombies? The FBC, the world's leading counter-bioterror organization operating under the auspices of the U.S. was called in to direct efforts to contain the attack. Why would a city in the Mediterranean call in a U.S. task force? That's more of a problem for the EU or NATO. In fact, the city of Terra Grigia almost seems to be U.S. territory concerning the people who live there and who was in control of it. Realizing the need for immediate and decisive action, Supreme Local Headquarters issued the order to use the city's solar energy matrix on itself. Seriously, who controlled this city with a giant space station that can melt cities? That's a weapon of mass destruction right there. Also, this space station that was built to power Terra Grigia with solar power is in low Earth orbit rather than geostationary, meaning it doesn't match Earth's rotational velocity and would complete several full orbits every 24 hours, making it impossible to power this city with solar power since it would only be overhead for a short time each day. The FBC announced it has successfully disbanded the terrorist group. Don't you mean kill or arrest? It is now 2005. It's always nice when the news reminds you of what year it is, just in case you forgot or happen to be a time traveler. And a sense of calm and security is finally returning to the people. One year after a terrible viral outbreak and destruction of a city by space laser, the people are reassured that all is well. As you can see, the lost city of Terra Grigia remains inaccessible. That's not what lost city means. It's right there. You are standing in front of it. Ruined or destroyed is a term you are looking for. What kind of news station is this that ends the report by taking the entire channel off the air and replacing it with static? I assume you both know that the FBC has cordoned off the entire area. If you assume that, then you don't even need to state this. Just get to the point. Normally in games when the devs create a bullet sponge enemy, they don't create an actual sponge. Jill, you are all too eager to reach your bare hand into potentially infectious heaps of monster flesh. And this one just tried to eat you. That beach tumor just happened to have a vial of T-Abyss virus inside of it for future evidence. What are the odds? Is the earpiece you're wearing just for show? Because you're using your phone instead of it. We lost contact with Chris and Jessica. The signal was lost over the ocean. Does the fact that they lost contact while in Finland and somehow traveled to the Mediterranean in no time seem strange at all to you? You hear that? Was that the lock? Locks have a habit of unlocking after they know the cutscene is over. There is not one female character in this game that wears a non-sexy wetsuit. Chris?
That's about as expressive as the real Chris, actually. It was Veltro's plan to lure Jill and Parker here using a fake Chris, then knock them out. If they needed Jill and Parker to enter the cell holding the dummy Chris, why did they lock it and force them to hunt down the key? Veltro needed them inside before springing their trap. Villain is introduced feet first cliche. It's time you learned the truth, Miss Valentine. And I could tell it to you, but instead I will take all of your weapons and leave you alone in this ship full of monsters. All will be clear in time. Jessica is introduced ass first. Unless this game gives us a close-up of Chris's crotch bulge soon, there is no way to make up for the eye candy deficit. Who wears tights and khaki shorts while hiking over a snow-covered mountain? Jessica looks like she's ready for a weekend in Aspen, not hunting down terrorists. My feet are killing me. Probably because you're wearing heels in snow underneath those leg warmers. Chris, roll your damn sleeves down when it's cold. Just because you have boulder punching arms doesn't mean we need to see them. Maybe it's the weather, but I still can't make contact with HQ. How did Veltro plan for this fake Chris plan in the first place? Chris is out of radio contact due to the weather, which is not something you can exactly plan for. Jill would never have been sent to the Queen Zenobia had Chris been able to call in. This was a plane crash. The only way that dead body could fall through the door like that is if the guy was leaning against it when he died. They were headed for Valcoin and Mock Airport. If that's where they are, this mine should take us there. Mines don't lead to airports. In fact, they don't lead anywhere. A mine is just a hole in the ground. What you were describing is a tunnel. Also, Jessica just said there were no shipping routes in the area when she saw the plane crash. There shouldn't be any shipping routes in this area. Yet here is an airport just across the mountain from where the plane went down. No, I'm not into slut shaming. But if I were, Jessica would be exactly the sort of slut I'd shame. You better look at this. You'd better take a look at this cliche. I could give this shot the benefit of the doubt if this was any other game, but here the camera is not so much establishing Jill as it is leering at her while she is unconscious. What was the point of knocking Jill and Parker out? All Veltro did was disarm them and lock them in separate bedrooms with their radios, only for Jill and Parker to reunite, retrieve their weapons, and continue doing what they had been doing before they were knocked out. Introduction by standoff cliche. Admittedly, this is a very Resident Evil only cliche, but this exact same scene plays out in just about every Resident Evil game. Parker. Who the hell are you? How the hell could you ever fail to recognize someone you once knew with hair like that? It's like Capcom mistakenly used a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character in their game. The city of Terra Grigia must have had a strict building code, since they built this exact same building ten different times. Also, I'm assuming those are solar panels on the top slope, which makes them very ineffective since many of them are angled away from the sun. Obliterating the site by satellite is only a quick fix. We could lose crucial evidence. Use of the satellite has already been approved. We can clean up this mess. I have to agree with Morgan, the villain of this game. Torching this city with a space laser sounds reasonable given the situation, but the game treats this as if it were the wrong thing to do. Raccoon City all over again. Every Resident Evil game is apparently required to compare its setting to Raccoon City with this line. That's not how solar panels work. They absorb sunlight to create electricity, not reflect it like a mirror. And if this thing is reflecting sunlight down to solar cells on Earth, it's a very inefficient and not to mention dangerous method of power generation. Also, intense sunlight wouldn't cause buildings to randomly fall over and an island to sink beneath the waves. The most it would do is heat up the buildings and cook anything organic on the streets. Answer me, Raymond. I don't have to answer anything. Considering you brought them here to learn the truth, you should answer their questions. Hell, you should have just sent them an email detailing everything they needed to know about the Terra Grigi incident and saved everyone's time. It's not like Jill is new to this. Here's another example of a scene that plays out in every one of these games. A character who is being held at gunpoint casually walks away and the good guys do nothing to stop him. But if I were to be seen that may bear fruit of infamy to the traitor whom I know, speaking and weeping shalt thou see together. He's quoting Dante. This game is fixated on the divine comedy. So much so that multiple characters quote it at every opportunity. However, I'm not really seeing the connection this game is trying to make between itself, a game about anti-terrorists fighting sea zombies, and a work of classic literature. I suppose since Norman is quoting a passage about traitors in the deepest circle, you could consider that the connection since he was betrayed by Morgan and left at the bottom of the ocean. But that doesn't explain why every other character is obsessed with Dante. I knew it was Veltro. What clued you in? The giant flag with the words Veltro you spotted over the airbase? Cleavage, heels... I'm just surprised these girls are not carrying specialty Louis Vuitton wetsuit bags into combat. I don't see a thing. I thought the Mediterranean was just like a big lake. What Jessica lacks in common sense, she makes up for in... Oh, wait. Also, why are they blindly looking for the Queen Zenobia? Jill and Parker had exact coordinates to it, and the ship hasn't moved since then since it is dead in the water. The whole ship's out of power. The ship's running on emergency power. But the comm system needs the main power. Why would the ship's communication not be running on the emergency power system? In an emergency at sea, you are going to want communications. Straight into the depths of hell. Game, you are not even Army of Darkness, let alone the Divine Comedy. Wow, that sounds like a job for us, don't it, Grinder? I'm gonna take a sin off from my ironic liking of a shit character and moment in the game because I can. At least Jackass and Grinder have fun hemming it up. You follow Jessica home. You know where she lives now? 
Almost. I had her until the very end, but I lost her near the... Hey! How did these two characters end up in the game? These two are the most out of place characters in the entire series. Oh! Oh! Whoa! There's something there! I don't know what, but we can't see it! It's like MST3K made a comeback episode to watch Paranormal Activity. And yes, I know Rift Tracks has actually done Paranormal Activity. Just work with my level of humor, okay? I could probably ask why the power station is designed to lock itself in flood when someone turns on the power, but honestly, I'm just making myself look stupid expecting an answer. Find a terminal at the crash site and see what you can learn of Veltro's plans. Find a working terminal on a plane that crashed in the mountains? Normally the black box is the only thing that survives. Bright out for this time of night. I guess that's why they call it the Midnight Sun. Judging by the name of this airbase and the remark about the Midnight Sun, I can only assume this is somewhere in Finland. And this is the same place where Chris fell out of radio contact for a few hours. And then HQ was fooled into believing he made it all the way to the Mediterranean, which is nowhere near Finland. And then later Chris and Jessica do make it all the way to the Mediterranean from here in a short amount of time. This radar terminal on the crash plane still works and has power, and somehow is tracking a ship in the Mediterranean Sea from Finland. Thank God for astronomically large miracles. I got the coordinates on the ship. I'm sending now. You already had the coordinates. That's how Jill and Parker found the ship in the first place. And there is no shortage of radars around the Mediterranean Sea, so finding this ship shouldn't be that difficult. Jessica's wetsuit looks like the sexy alternative outfit you would normally unlock after beating the game. Nobody home. Where'd you go? Jill. Did you ever stop to read the name on the ship's bow before boarding? How do you board the wrong ship? Now that the head fake of Chris appearing to come to the rescue only to board the wrong ship is over, let's easily save ourselves like we could have all along. Damn it, I don't have a signal. Maybe the antenna array is out. It's on the observation deck. Maybe we can fix it. The entire premise of this game hinges on the loss of radio contact. First Jill and Parker get tricked into boarding this ship after Chris and Jessica lost contact. Then after Jill and Parker lose radio contact, Chris and Jessica had to do the same thing. Can someone in this game carry a satellite phone for God's sake? Was there a sale on Amazon for this book? O'Brien keeps a photo on his desk of the man he knows is evil and is personally trying to bring down. The UAV can discharge shaft that will throw off the satellite's targeting system. This satellite is either using GPS coordinates for targeting or direct visual. Chaff can only disrupt radar. Good thing Jill can assemble a drone and its launcher that she's never worked with before in just a few minutes. It took me over an hour to put together a standing desk once. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. I have a Dante quote for you. There is no greater sorrow than to recall happiness in times of misery. You two used a helicopter to get to the wrong ship earlier. What happened to that? You could have avoided all the tentacles around the Queen Zenobia. And why didn't these things attack Jill and Parker when they showed up? This game has no shame. None. You stopped the Regia Solis. Now I will reveal what I know. Could have done that hours ago before Jill and Parker almost died several times. I mean, this ship was almost destroyed with you on it. Why did they need to aimlessly walk around the ship for hours doing repairs until you decided to show up and tell them something? Consider this. First, why did it take till now to find the Queen Zenobia? How was it able to float around the Mediterranean undetected? Could you stop sending this stupid plot? That's my job. And that. Holy shit, someone finally did it. Shot a person in the middle of narrating when they were held at gunpoint. I had to take a sin off for that first. Why did you fire? Yeah, why did you shoot the terrorists? Protocol clearly states you only point your gun at him in a threatening way until he walks away and you do nothing, nothing to try and stop him. Amateur. I'm not surprised Raymond was the one in the gas mask. I'm more surprised he could keep his hair looking like that while wearing a gas mask. If I'm being too doogity by harping on how blatantly over-sexualized Jessica is as a character, it's because the game gives me no choice. Her casting credit might as well be thought. A little friendly partner swapping should keep us on our toes. Uh, phrasing. This works anywhere, even underwater. Don't put it in your pocket though. It's covered in spikes. A pretty big design flaw when you think about it. It's okay. I set up a back door. I can use any PDA to get us in. You were using a terminal on a crashed airplane. How did you set up a back door into the airport's network? Director O'Brien. I think I put it all together. Veltro was never back in action. It was all smoke and mirrors orchestrated by yourself. Your own little Veltro production. All to get into the head of one certain somebody. If you wanted to look into Morgan, you could have just ordered Chris and the others to investigate directly, not set up an elaborate plot to get them all on a boat, just so they could slowly learn what you already knew, that Morgan was behind the Terra Grigia attack. They survived this. If you were going to make a deadly virus to destroy mankind, maybe don't make a vaccine for it. I knew O'Brien and his dog Raymond were sniffing around my business. I didn't account for your involvement, however. That was my only mistake.
I'd say your second mistake is admitting to all this in a live video. They don't currently have any hard evidence to link you to the Terragrigia attack. Turns out Raymond is alive because he wore a vest. Now he gets to be the one holding people ineffectively at gunpoint. Jessica once again tries to shoot the guy she knows is wearing a vest. The only reason she accomplishes anything here is because Parker takes the bullet for Raymond. I guess Parker also forgot Raymond is wearing a vest and can probably take another bullet. Don't worry about dinner. Now we're even. The more flirty and sexy a woman is in this series, the more likely she is to be working for a bioterrorist organization. Game uses the same fake-out trick again by showing a ship exploding after Jessica activates a self-destruct, which turns out to be the Queen Zenobia sister ship. However, that makes no sense because Chris and the BSAA took over that ship and there's no one aboard who would activate the self-destruct. Now we finally have a target. Start counting, Morgan. <laughs> Not the most original last words. You are dealing with Chris Redfield here. You want snappy one-liners, you need to get Leon on the call. Parker survives this. I don't think he even singed his suit. In the category of boss fights that go on way too long, I'd say this one makes the list. This is what O'Brien is relaying to Chris and Jill about the Terra Grigi attack a year ago. Yet he wasn't present for this conversation. We knew that you could end up being a liability. So we've kept video records of all of our interactions. If they go public, your life is finished. Norman really had Morgan by the balls without evidence. You would think he would have released it to the public after Morgan betrayed him and trapped him at the bottom of the ocean. Instead, he sat on it for a year and did nothing. Full soon shall thou be where thine eye shall answer make to thee of this, seeing the cause which raineth down the blast. So did you memorize the entire book just so you could quote it verbatim? But sir, couldn't you have at least told us? I couldn't risk it. Not with a mole inside the BSAA. Everything they learned about Morgan and Terra Grigia they learned from either Raymond, who was working with you, or from you just not telling them. So in the end, after everything, you had to tell them anyway. And why would you ever suspect that either Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield may be a mole who helped a man destroy a city with bioweapons? They are the last two people who would ever do that. Keith and Quinn, they've left us with an ace in the hole. The data analysis they sent us, the results are in. We assume Veltro made use of two sister ships in the Terra Grigia panic, but there was a third. It wasn't even needed for anyone to head to the ships. The airbase where Chris started the game had the intel about the third ship, the Queen Dido, where Norman is with the evidence to put Morgan away. Had you not gotten in the way of the investigation, Chris might have found it back then. Bullets would no longer work after being submerged in seawater for over a year, nor would a potted plant still be growing. Gee, I wonder where I'm supposed to shoot him. Teleportation is always used to be a dick cliche. This boss fight is that sin personified, actually. I speak for everyone who's ever played this game when I say, fuck this boss fight. Fuck this boss fight in particular. Jill broadcasts the evidence straight from Norman's PDA and gets Morgan arrested. So why didn't Norman do that himself a year ago? They're not flying off into the sunset, but they are flying off into the distance like in every other Resident Evil game. There had to be a book club subplot in this game at some point. You two were working together, but she shot to kill you, then tried to shoot you again, then blew up the ship you were on, and you two had completely opposite goals. This game wants to set up intrigue for the sequel with these two, but neither of them or any other character from this game is in Revelations 2, nor is anything that happened in this game relevant in the sequel. This game can't even sequel bait correctly. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light.